By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a third round game in the Knights of Thorn old school tournament in the Netherlands, Deventer. And on the left we have a player who's playing with a controlled dreams deck. And on the right a mono black player who I believe is also playing with underworld dreams. And he's on the play, the player on the right, starting with a soul ring. And there we see a library of Alexandria by the control player on the left. And there is a hypnotic specter. Interesting because you have the library of Alexandria and then you kind of have the hippie making things right again, you could say. But here's a maze of if and that means that that hippie will probably not do any damage unless the mono black player has a sinkhole here or another way to get rid of that maze. Okay, here we see the uh, the dice coming into the, into our screen so we can see the life total. So both players obviously are still on 20. There's a tap for two and it's not a sinkhole, but it's a black knight. And there we go. That's an Urborg. And only special lands here, so a Blood Moon would be quite funny with this board. And there is a Paralyze, pretty cool. Look at those colors, that looks like a Beta Paralyze there. Very vivid colors. And it means the, uh, the Black Knight is tapped and during the upkeep, the Black Player can pay four to untap it. And there's a second Hippie on the board. But even if uh, the control player has to take two damage here and discard a card, he already has gotten so much uh, advantage. And there's a Dark Ritual um, from the uh, Library of Alexandria, drawing another extra card. And this is interesting, so using the Library, first using the Dark Ritual for three mana and then using the Library to draw and then play out a Hypnotic Spectre. So... The black player can choose to trade, he's playing a maze of if as well, so looking a little defensive and is attacking. I think that's the good move when your opponent is on the Library of Alexandria plan, at least you want to put some pressure on. And this is nice, this is the Kumbaya Witches, a card from the Arabian Nights, it's a 1-3 creature and you can tap it to deal 1 damage to any target and then your opponent can choose to do one damage back to any target. Pretty cool card that doesn't see a lot of play. So interesting tech here from the mono black player. And there comes a mind twist and ah, uh, yuck. And it's hard to see what he's discarding, but I see Kumbaya Witches and two Underworld Dreams. So the mono black player is also playing with Underworld Dreams. Usually um, is a pretty nice combination uh, when you're having that early aggression um, and then you're having uh, the, the added damage from Underworld Dreams kind of to finish your opponent. So it's, it's definitely diff a different uh, tactic than the control player who more wants to control the board. And we kind of saw an, uh, a big attack there from the uh, Mono Black player. Unfortunately, he was only able to do of, uh, only a few points of damage here and another paralyze wow and I mean now he has to choose every turn am I going to untap something or am I going to invest my mana in something else and he has to make that decision in his upkeep so before his draw step and that makes it extra difficult for him to make a decision and that mind twist was just devastating because now the dreams deck has to control it once and can slowly start building up the board presence and the control elements. We see a Sapphire here and I believe that's a Ancestral Recall that he's played and that's why he's drawing three cards. It's, again, it's not visible on screen. So that's a, a bit of a pity here. And look at that field, it's just all his creatures are paralyzed, or at least two of them, only having the witches to ping some damage. Attacking nonetheless with the Mishra's Factory. 
and the Kumaya, which is able, and he's able to do one measly point of damage here. And another paralyze. Okay, this is this is ridiculous here. We got three paralyze. And you can kind of see how powerful paralyze can be, or maybe I should say annoying. And this is a very nice combo playing the Royal Assassin. As we all know, Royal Assassin uh, can assassinate creatures that are tapped. So that means starting next turn, he can start to assassinate. But here we see the Kumbia Witches in action. And that means one damage to the Royal Assassin, and he can now deal one damage to any target. And it's probably going to be on him, of course, on the black player. So he's getting a ping back here, but it was well worth that one damage. So that Kumbia Witches kind of saved him, but then again, he still has card advantage, and he still has control of the game, it seems. And he's playing a Brain Geyser. Again, it's difficult to see, but he's drawing four cards here with a Brain Geyser. And blue, blue just gives you that ability to draw cards in old school. Having that Ancestral Recall and Brain Geyser, extremely powerful cards. And with that Brain Geyser, he's activating his, uh, activated his Library of Alexandria again. So he's now drawing extra cards again. And I think when you're the mono black player, you kind of know that it's over, but you're not giving up because you know it's not completely over. And here we see an Underworld dream, uh, Dreams hitting the board. So that's the enchantment from Legends that so many players play these days. And when you draw, when your opponent draws a card, he deals uh, a damage. And this is one of these nice one-sided enchantments. And what I mean by that is that you, as the controller of the enchantment, don't have the effect played on you. So you don't get the damage yourself. It's only your opponent who gets a damage for each card that he or she draws. And this is a great position to be in here, having your library drawing extra, having your um, Underworld Dreams there on the field, and now even a Disrupting Scepter, so you're kind of forcing your opponent's hand as well. And activating, it seems, activating that Disrupting Scepter straight away, although I don't see a tap, but the opponent there is discarding a card. Yeah, now he taps the Disrupting Scepter, and you, it's a Suchi, by the looks of it, so... And that's not great. Now this is interesting because the Meek Stone doesn't necessarily have great uh, synergy with the Paralyze because Paralyze says pay four and you can untap it. And Meek Stone says when a creature's power is greater than two, it doesn't untap. Um, so that's a funny combination. So for instance, if I would play a Paralyze on the Suchi that he just discarded, the Suchi would tap because of the Paralyze, but I could un can untap it again in the upkeep because of the Paralyze's ability where I can pay four. But I, I mean, I like this tactic of playing Paralyze's early game because they're just one black to kind of stop um, this early aggression. And then in the in the late game, play a Meek Stone. And I wonder with how many, for instance, Maze of Ifs he plays in this deck. And another Underworld Dream. So that means that the black player is going to take two damage just for one measly card. And now there's even, he even manages to take away the Maze of Ifs. So that means that he can probably start getting some damage in with the Mishra's Factory. So taking two damage here, going down to 14. And this is so difficult because you are not going to untap any of your creatures because you're like, I want to do something with the card that I draw. But you have to play out the card that you draw. And there is a sinkhole. So that sinkhole would have been very useful at the start of the game. And now it doesn't look so special anymore. And he kind of knows, you know, that, that my opponent has card advantage, so I'm not going to take care of that library anymore. That's a, a path station. That's probably, um, those are probably the thoughts of, of the mono black player in this situation, thinking, okay, the best thing I can do is, is for some way just get some damage in, and that's why I'm taking away the Maze of If. And there's the first attack here by the Mishra's Factory, dealing three damage because of the other one pumping it. And then also, look, three Underworld Dreams on the board, so that means he's going to take a lot of damage. And yeah, I think this game is pretty much over. What could be an out here? I mean, another another reason that Paralyzes are quite nice is they work really well against a card like Balance, for instance, because when you're dominant on the board, it's not like you've 
uh, your opponent still has a lot of creatures. So if your opponent would play a balance, you don't lose any creatures because the creatures are still on the board. And here we see the mono black player giving back the uh, paralyzes and saying, okay, man, you've got this one. And this was quite an interesting first game to look at. I guess that, that control from the Underworld Dreams player came very slowly. And for a long time, I had the feeling that maybe the mono black player could play underneath all the control elements with aggression but it didn't work there were just too many uh control cards there on the board especially those paralyzes i believe really really killed it for the mono black player so they're going to look at their sideboards and we are going to come back when they start at game number two game number two between control dreams and aggro black mono black and the player on the right has lost the first game so he gets to be on the play Playing a Swamp there. Unfortunately, there seems to be some blur on the camera. But, okay, I can try to recognize. Okay, luckily, it's it's uh, it's back again. And look at this opening by the uh, Control Dreams player. This is crazy. Um, I believe I saw a Dark Ritual there into an Underworld Dreams. And then using a Black Lotus, sacking the Lotus to play a Time Twister. And wow. This is an opening. This is the opening you want to see when you're playing an Underworld Dreams deck. I mean, look at that. And that means that the Mono Black player is losing seven life. Why? He draws seven cards because of the Time Twister. That's brutal. There's a Mox Jet. There's a Mox Sapphire. And finally, he passed the turn. So he's taking another damage going to 12. And tapping two there, playing a sinkhole. Not too bad. But there's an underground C and playing a hypnotic specter. Oh. And this is sometimes you have that when you're playing old school, when your opponent just has such a crazy opening that there's just not much you can do. I mean, you're sitting back and you're looking at it, and that's exactly what. Uh, power does that's exactly what power cards can do and that you saw that here if you have the right components combined with power you can go so incredibly fast and just do stupid broken stuff and you saw that here with the time twister and the underworld dreams but it's nice to see here that the mono black player is not giving up playing a drain life here over the hypnotic specter um oh and this is interesting yeah play, playing the paralyze paralyze gets tapped using the royal assassin now i really like that combo it's very old school um, I actually have uh, a deck where I play that combo as well, and when it works, it just it, it gives you such a good feeling. That kind of one-two combination. And another thing, the the uh, Royal Assassin actually works really, really well against Mishra's Factories because what Mishra's Factories usually do when they block is they block, they pump themselves, becoming a three-three. And then of course, when you have a Royal, your opponent is not going to do that. And here we see an attack. Probably because of that reason, attacking here with a 2-2. And he just played that factory, so he can make it a 3-3. So I believe the best play here is to just take the damage, even though he's on 11. Of course, I don't know what's in his hand, and I don't know um, his reasoning. And I believe that's what they're discussing here. And you can see that the opponent has the Kumbaya Witches again, and I just think it's a lovely card, a beautiful art. And he can start using it next turn because it now still has Summoning Sickness, and then it can simply kill the Royal Assassin. And I think the Royal Assassin can kill the Kumbaya, which is in, in uh, response. But we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen here. Fact is, he's on 7. He's already behind the game, so this is going to be very difficult for him. And again, what Underworld Dreams does is it, it, it kind of puts a clock on your life total on the game. So even though he's kind of stabilized now with the Witches and having blockers in place, it's still a very difficult situation um, because... Oh, and here we see him doing it. And there we go. So he's activating the Gumbia Witches in response. He's using the Royal Assassin before the damage results on the Royal. So both cards are gone. I think this is a good move because now he can activate his Mishra's Factory. That does mean a trade, but I think that's probably the best decision here. And he's on, he's on seven. And what I wanted to say is with the Underworld Dreams, you have a clock. So even though you kind of stabilize the board, you still know, okay, eventually I'm going to die. This is an interesting decision. Or are they going to, to change... 
that because he wants to block here with the black knight and that's followed up by a pump by the mistress factory again i don't know what's in his hand and maybe he needs that fifth mana to cast something so that's why he didn't want to trade it for his mistress factory it's always difficult when you don't see the hand to then kind of decide whether or not it's a good decision because you're not playing um, the game and you don't have the cards and obviously it's not my deck as well but it's interesting to see the choices that players make and now there's a Suchi on the board he's on five taking a card I think believe he now needs to go down to four and this is actually quite nice this disc um, it at least gets rid of the underworld dreams but I mean look at the control dreams um, board state here there are so many uh, Mishra's factories and those factories I think those are the ones that are going to kill him obviously now past turn end of turn probably activate the disc and that's so good about those those factories and now if he attacks with the factories he will activate he's attacking with one so he, he says okay activate it I'm cool and that means that the Moxon go and the animated Mishra's Factory goes and also the Underworld Dreams goes. So he's on four life. And maybe he can find something to fight back here. But he's not playing his Underworld Dreams. But that doesn't look very impressive when your opponent's on 20. But hey, you got to do something. And now he's attacking. He's on four. I believe he needs to block here. That's exactly what he does. And this is just a simple trade or chum block, actually, I should say. And you don't want to be in that position. And there's probably another chum block coming. And what the opponent actually um, can do as well in this case is say, hey, I'm going to attack with... Oh, no, he doesn't have enough mana. What I want to say is attack with two Mistress Factories and whichever he blocks, take out of combat with the Maze of If. And there's a drain life. I like this. I mean, he's fighting back. So he's going to 8. So the opponent is going to 14. Now he's going to 13 after this draw, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he already took the damage. Hitting him for 4. Oh, yeah. There you go. And pumping it. So he takes 5 damage in total. And there's another Mishra's Factory. And, I mean, the Mono Black player is trying to hold on. But I think... When we look back at this game, there's the handshake. When we look back at this game, uh, it was decided at that uh, the start of that of that game because that was just insane with that Black Lotus um, and that uh, Dark Ritual into an Underworld Dreams and the Black Lotus into the Time Twister dealing seven early damage, but also um, you know taking such a um, um, you know taking taking such a big advantage there after game one you know that's just kind of crazy so again we've seen um a game here at the knights of thorn that's decided in a 2-0 victory and this was the third round match so i'm looking forward to seeing round number four and obviously hoping to see some closer games for now thank you for watching this episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and if you'd like to see more games check out the videos that are appearing right now on the screen or have a look on the channel Thank you for watching and see you next time.